Hi, I'm Lisa. Let's learn 10 common English proverbs. Understanding English proverbs will help you to understand native speakers, and using proverbs will help you sound more fluent when you're speaking English. We will also learn the pronunciation of some difficult English sounds, and we will practice the American accent. What are proverbs? Proverbs are short sentences that generally contain wisdom or advice or some kind of warning, expressions that teach us something. Often, we remember our grandparents using proverbs, and proverbs get passed down through generations. These are wise words of advice about how to live our lives. I will teach you 10 English proverbs that all native speakers know and use. Why should you learn English proverbs? Understanding the proverbs of a specific culture will help you to understand how the people in that culture think and how they view the world and what their values are. Also, knowing proverbs will help you to understand native speakers better. Native speakers use proverbs regularly. The first proverb is, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And to hatch means to come out of an egg. And I think that one is pretty logical. You probably know what that means, right? It means don't make a plan to do something until something happens because we don't know for sure that it's going to happen. Wait until you have something and then you can plan what to do next. What's interesting to me about proverbs is that other languages have a similar proverb that means the same thing. For example, there's the same proverb in French, but it doesn't talk about chicken and hatching eggs. It talks about a bear and the bear skin. In France, they say, don't sell the bear skin before killing the bear. It means the same thing. Is there a similar proverb in your language? Let me know in the comments below. I find that so interesting that we have similar proverbs, but they're expressed using different examples. Let's use this proverb in a sentence. I will buy a new car when I get the bonus money next month. Don't count your chickens until they hatch. You don't know for sure that you're going to get the money. The next proverb is, actions speak louder than words. First, let's pronounce word correctly. That's a difficult word to say. The W and the O sounds can be difficult to pronounce. We don't say ward, we say word. Don't round your lips for the O. It's not O, it's ER. The sound changes. Let's say that, words, words. Now, let's say the whole proverb. Actions speak louder than words. And you notice how I connected the two S's? I didn't say actions speak. I combined them and it sounded almost like singular. Actions speak. Let's say that again. Actions speak louder than words. And that means what you do is more important than what you say. Don't tell me you're going to do it. Don't talk about it. Do it. I promise I will finish it by Friday. That's what you said last week. Actions speak louder than words. The next expression is, the early bird gets the worm. With the previous proverb, I taught you how to pronounce the word word. This expression has three words that have exactly the same sound. Early. We don't say early. It's er. Er. Early. Bird. Worm. So the words word and worm are pronounced almost the same, only the last letter is different. Let's say those three words again with the er sound. Early. Bird. Worm. And now let's say the proverb. The early bird gets the worm. If you wake up early or if you do something early before everybody else, you will be successful. You will get what you want. 
Let's arrive early to get the best seats. The early bird gets the worm. If you want to be successful, you need to get up early. The early bird gets the worm. The next expression is, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. And that means when someone else has something, it always looks better than what we have. People tend to want what they don't have. Other people's lives look better than ours. I would be much happier if I had a job like yours. Don't be so sure. The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. And by the way, sometimes people just say, the grass is always greener on the other side. They don't necessarily say the whole thing. The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Do you have a similar proverb in your language? Let me know in the comments. The next proverb is, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Let's say that naturally. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Let's connect the words, put all your eggs. Put all your eggs. Put all your eggs. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. And that means don't put all your effort and all your resources in one place. That's taking a big risk. If something doesn't work out, you lose everything. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You should apply for several jobs rather than just one. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. I invested in several different stocks. I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket. The next proverb is, you can't judge a book by its cover, or don't judge a book by its cover. Maybe the outside of a book is beautiful, but maybe the book is not very good. So don't judge something by the outside appearance. Things sometimes look different than they really are. He doesn't look very smart. Don't judge a book by its cover. He has a PhD in physics. That hotel looks beautiful from the outside, but it's old and not well maintained. You can't judge a book by its cover. The next expression is, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. This expression has some words with long vowels. Let's practice those vowels. Let's say, ah, apple, open your mouth. Ah, the apple, the apple. And then fall, open your mouth again. Ah, in British English, it's more like full, but in American English, it's a much bigger vowel, fall. And then far, open your mouth again. Ah, far. And tree, it's a long vowel, tree. Let's say that slowly first, and then after that more quickly. The apple, doesn't fall far from the tree. You say it. Now let's say it faster and more naturally. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And that means a child has similar qualities or a similar character to his or her parents. That young politician is corrupt and dishonest. His father was the same. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You are as talented as your father. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Usually this expression is used in a negative way, but sometimes it's used in a positive way too. The next expression is, a leopard doesn't change its spots. And pay attention to the way I pronounced leopard. That E-O, we don't say leopard, we say leopard, leopard. A leopard doesn't change its spots. We also say a tiger doesn't change its stripes. A leopard has spots, but a tiger has stripes. What does that mean? A leopard doesn't change its spots. It means a person's character doesn't change. If they are a bad person, maybe they will pretend to be a good person, but they're still bad because a leopard doesn't change its spots. Their true nature doesn't change. 
He apologized for lying to me. Be careful. I wouldn't trust him again. A leopard doesn't change its spots. The next expression is strike while the iron is hot. Let's look at the pronunciation of the word iron. That's a commonly mispronounced word. A lot of my students say something like this, iron. That O should be reduced. It sounds like this, I earn, iron. Let's say that quickly, iron. We iron our clothes, or iron is a kind of metal. Let's say the proverb again, strike while the iron is hot. And that means you should take advantage of a good opportunity or a good situation while you can before it changes. You need to take action now. Don't wait. We need to strike while the iron is hot and invest in that stock. The value will soon increase. And the next one is don't bite the hand that feeds you. And that means if someone is paying you or helping you, you must be careful not to make them angry or not to hurt them. Don't say anything bad about them. I want to tell my boss why I'm so angry. Be careful. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Try to use these proverbs in different situations when you're speaking English. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure that you do and click on the notification bell so that you can get notified when I post my next video. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To learn all of the rules for a good American accent, you can buy my online video courses at accurateenglish.com. Thank you.